Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So, let's continue our Vulcan stuff Okay So, in the last or the previous video We have actually created a graphics pipeline In this video, we're gonna actually draw our triangle <laughs> Alright, so yeah Let's get, let's get going Alright interesting stuff um so let's see what we can do so we have created a render pass graphics pipeline then the frame buffers now we have to create a command pool so command pool create it's going to give it the state and we're also going to create a command buffer create we're going to also give it the state again Next up is synchronization objects, okay? So synchronization objects create state. Or we can just call it sync. Sync objects create, okay? And I think that's pretty much it for render create this point. And the render the render destroy here we're gonna go ahead and say sync oh uh, let's remove that h right there so sync objects destroy oh actually hold on a second uh, we're not gonna create the command buffer we're gonna allocate command buffers uh, from the command pool that we created before and so we don't really have to do anything um, it's like the the command buffers will get a uh, deallocated automatically when we uh, destroy the command pool so we don't need to do anything special right there uh, now I'm just gonna say command pool well uh, after sync objects destroy command pool destroy uh, right state Okay, lovely stuff, interesting. Now, the problem with our render destroy is that the render could be destroyed while the GPU is still working on something in parallel, uh, which is not the best idea ever. Um, so what we could do, we could wait for the GPU to finish before we actually, uh, you know, it's like just uh, destroy the render stuff the objects that the GPU are is using right so how we could do that well we could have VK wait for okay there is VK device wait device wait idle and there's also VK queue wait idle uh, for me I'm just gonna go with VK queue wait idle and I'm just gonna give it the state context dot device although the other function will also work so yeah state q um render uh, no context dot q not q family dot q okay yo what's going on hold on a second no it only takes in a q all right interesting yeah, all right, let's go. So you just say vkq wait idle, say it context.q before we start destroying the objects that the GPU could be using. All right, all right, all right, all right. So that's pretty much it for the render, I think, at this point. So let's start uh, with that stuff, okay? So void command pull create, right? State. State. There you go. Void command pool. Destroy. Next up is command buffer allocate. There you go. Next up is sync objects create. And of course, we're going to destroy those sync objects. So, sync objects, this Roy. And that's basically it. So now we have just declared all those functions. Now let's start by creating our command pool. 
Uh, it's quite simple. Expect, right? VK create command pool. There you go. You give it the device, which is in our context. Then you give it a VK command pool. Create info. Okay. Then you give it the allocator, which is in our inside our config. And next up, you give it the uh, where to put the command pool. I'm going to put it in my render. Of course, we give the address, not the actual objects, but because we're telling Vulkan to put that object there. Okay, so let me open up this guy. And here, let's give it a good error message. So couldn't create command pool. And there you go. Now, command pool, let's create a new field for it. And there you go. I created a new field for it in the render. And now let's go back to our render. Now let's fill in the properties of this command pool. Of course, first of all, let's go with the S type is equal to um, command pool create info. There you go. Next up is the key family index, which is in our context. So the key family, let's go. And that's, uh, and we also need another, we need one of the, the flags. Let's see. So there is transient bit, receipt, command buffer bit, and protected bit. Okay, since I'm going to be re-recording my, my command buffer every frame, uh, I need to actually set this uh, flag right here. I need to use that flag, okay? Because I'm going to have one command buffer that I'm going to keep on re-recording, reusing every frame. Uh, because there is, in fact, there is a lot of ways that you could go with your how you set up your your command buffers um, but this is the most commonly used way of doing it right so yeah all right so that's the, the whole thing for the create command pool next up is the command pool destroy easy easy right so destroy the command pool state context device there you go next up is the command pool so um, render the command pool. There you go. And of course the allocators. So config the allocator. And there you go. Pretty much. No need to check any errors because there is nothing void. Okay. Next up is allocated command buffers. Let's go. So vk allocate command buffers. We're going to give it the device. Uh, oh, the context dot device. Okay. Uh, next up is the a reference to vk command buffer allocate info. All right. Next up is where to put those command buffers. Although it's saying command buffers, but we're only going to be, you, you know, like creating one command buffer. So I'm just going to call it command buffer instead of command buffers. Okay. So uh command buffer like this all right nice and of course let's not forget to expect so we can handle the error right couldn't allocate command buffer all right interesting stuff in the future uh for performance we may actually create multiple command buffers um but for now, we're only going to be creating one and reusing that one command buffer. So anyways, create new field, command buffer. There you go. Because using multiple command buffers is a bit little more complex, but yeah, not too much. But anyways, so command buffer count is equal one dot. So only creating one command buffer. And of course, I have to, to tell it which command pool that we're trying to allocate command buffers from. So state. Oh, not not state command buffer, state render, bro. OK, render dot command buffer. Let's create this guy new field. Let's remove it from the state. Thank you. Now let's go back to our render. So state uh, render document pool. Let's go. There you go. I would like to actually set the command pool first. 
Although I wonder if there is an S type. Yeah, there is an S type. So VK allocate. There you go. All right. So after that, of course, I have to tell it uh, the level of the command buffers. And the level is command buffer level primary. So there is two levels. There is primary and secondary. Primary can be submitted directly into the GPU. Uh, it's kind of like the main function. Um, and the secondary, you cannot really submit it in directly into the GPU. You can only call it from primary command buffers, right? Just like the main function and other functions. So you can think about secondary as you know, normal functions that you can call from your main function, which is basically the the, the primary uh, command buffers. So right now we all, we are not gonna care about uh, secondary command buffers. We only care about uh, primary. So that's just a little note right there. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for command buffer allocate. Next up is. And since we are allocated from a command pool, right? The moment you destroy the command pool, right? The all the command buffers just get destroyed too because you allocated from that command pool. So yeah. Anyways, so next up is creating the synchronization objects that we need. Now the thing is, uh, the GPU. Now, now the thing is, in OpenGL, for example, when you call a function like let's say you present to the screen or you draw some triangle or whatever uh, what happens is that your code will wait for the well in fact it's not really yeah it's, it's not a good example actually but basically uh, normally when you call a function you would expect it to only exit to only return uh, when it's finished its execution, it's finished its whole operation, right? Um, but the thing is, when it comes to Vulkan, when you tell the GPU some operation, like for example, submit this command buffer or present to the screen or whatever, it doesn't really wait. Like the function just returns immediately, right? It doesn't wait for the GPU to end the operation. And so how we can synchronize, basically it's using like asynchronous, uh, kind of way of doing things, right? And this sh would help r a lot in terms of parallel execution. Like while the GPU is doing some work, the G the CPU can also do some work. For example, while the GPU is preparing, rendering, etc., to to the frame zero, you can the CPU can go ahead and prepare the command buffers, etc., for the next frame. Um, and that's basically the logic behind it. So now the thing is to actually synchronize the efforts between the CPU and the GPU when it's needed, when it's required, we need to create some synchronization objects. We need to use those synchronization objects. Now there is two main types of synchronization objects. There is semaphores and there is uh, fences. So semaphores are basically synchronization objects for uh, the GPU, uh, the GPU itself, because the G even the GPU itself uh, the queues, you know, and even inside the queue, like the operations can be all around the globe, right? So you have this command buffer and uh, this second command buffer or this queue and this second queue, each is executing in parallel maybe. So how would you synchronize them? Well, you use a semaphore. But if you want to synchronize, so basically semaphores are for device to device synchronization kind of, right? But there's also another one, which is a fence. A fence is for synchronizing the CPU and the GPU. Okay, so the CPU and the device. All right, uh, so pretty cool stuff. Now, I only need one fence and two uh, semaphores. Of course, again, there is a lot of ways to do this. And this is not the most efficient way. This is just the most efficient, easiest way of doing it, right? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and let's try to create the the. Um, and while we're at this, you know, explaining this, let me tell you that you're not like your your Vulkan application won't be that good. In fact, it would probably be worse than than OpenGL. But when your scene will get more complex, right? Oh, Vulkan will go right ahead and will win the competition. 
um, especially when you're gonna use Vulcan uh, strong points strings right which is of course multi-threading like for example creating the command buffers in multiple threads etc and and trying as much as possible to not wait for the gpu okay try to keep the cpu busy uh doing some work you know um if it is possible so yeah that's basically the case so for example you could be rendering like you could for example uh request the the GPU to upload the texture from, let's say, some kind of fast transfer queue, like a dedicated transfer queue. Uh, so while uploading that big texture that will take a lot of time, what you can do, you can also tell the GPU to render the scene and render the scene with some like placeholder uh, where the texture is used or, you know, something like this. In fact, you may be seeing it in some games where you know when the game is just loading you can see that the game objects aren't visible or are just you know in some color like yeah, i don't know pink or something <laughs> uh indicate until the texture gets loaded then you can actually see the object textured um uh, but anyways there's just a lot of stuff but right now let's just stay here with our triangle okay so let's create two semaphores that i'm gonna need and i'm gonna show you in a second why so context.device and here we have vk uh, semaphore create info let's go okay all right and next up is the config.allocator and again the where to put the semaphore so i'm going to say reference of what of state uh let's see render finished semaphore uh first of all image acquired semaphore okay so inside the render i'm gonna put it uh although to be honest with you there is some things that i would like to to maybe uh, put into the swap chain instead of the renderer but anyways for now let's just keep it simple so image acquired semaphore okay lovely stuff now let's add an expect right here and let's say couldn't create image acquired semaphore all right Let's create this semaphore right here. Create new field, and there you go. I added a new semaphore there, nice. So let's go back, 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 okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna pause for a second. All right, back into business, so let's go back. All right, so sync objects create dot S type is equal to VK. Well, uh, uh, simple, right? Yeah, type binary. Now, the thing is, there's multiple um, types of semaphores. There is binary and there is timeline. Now, binary is just either signaled or not signaled. Timeline is more complex than that. It's it's kind of like you could have multiple signal states, right? It's not like binary, zero or one. It could be zero, one, two, three, etc. So we don't care about that. We only care about binary. So, yeah, but hold on a second. No, uh, not this guy. Oh, right. So let's actually say structure type. Okay, hold on. Semaphore create info. Yeah, type semaphore create info. Uh, Okay, where do you actually tell it? Is it... Uh, anyways, I kind of got... Uh, over myself. Anyways, uh, S type flags next. Anyway, so S type type semaphore create info. Okay. Uh, for this guy, as we said, couldn't create image acquired semaphores. And I don't think we need anything else that, other than that. There is flags. <coughs> Okay, semaphore create info, there is signal bit. Now, uh, this is interesting, but not interesting for me right now. Uh, basically, the semaphore could start in the signaled state instead of the in signaled state, right? Uh, but that's basically what that flag does. It could be useful in some 
in some cases, but I'm not going to be using it uh, in this video. All right, so expect VK create. Now let's just copy because I do need two semaphores. All right, so now I'm just going to change the name of the semaphore to render finished semaphore. Okay, couldn't create render finished semaphore right here. Render finished semaphore. There you go. Now the last thing is the fence, creating a fence. Okay, um, and don't worry, I'm gonna, you know, like, explain this much better in in just a second. So, render finish semaphore. And now for this one is, well, we're gonna say, let's see. Uh, so, the technical, the technical expression is in flight. It's called, they're called in-flight fences, okay? Um, in-flight frame or whatever. But you can think of a, about it basically just like this semaphore, render finished semaphore, right? Uh, we'll actually go into more details later on, but yeah, anyways. But instead for, as a semaphore, it's a fence, right? So create new field, there you go. Now, in the future, when we're going to have multiple command buffers, we're also going to have multiple in-flight fences, all right? Multiple fences, multiple semaphores, right? A semaphore for each frame, uh, fences for each frame, etc., etc. So, anyways, so sync objects destroy. Now, we're going to basically destroy all those stuff that we... Hold on, hold on a second. And not create semaphore here. It's a fence, Okay. And here is the vacant semaphore create info. It's fence create info. And create uh, in flight fence here. And there you go. And for this guy, huh? In flight, why it's this? Hold on a second. Why it's made a semaphore? Oh. I think I know why, but anyway, so VK fence, make sure that's the case. And there you go, we're done with the fence. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Oh, there you go, I forgot something. So this should also be fence create info. And yeah, uh, so pretty much that's done. Now, VK destroy, destroy fence. State context or device, state of uh, Let's see, render dot fence or what? State, yeah, render dot in flight fence, right? And then state config allocator. Okay, lovely. Next up is destroying the semaphores that we got. So, by the way, make sure to add a semicolon there. The VK destroy semaphore. Here, the state device. Well, context, the device, and then the semaphore. The, for the semaphore, we're gonna go with um, let's see, state uh, render the render finished semaphore. Now the thing is, I still didn't create that render finished semaphore field, so let's create that as you can see. And just for organizational purposes, let's put the semaphores with each other. Just like this, okay. Now uh, let's go back. All right, so let's start by the render finish semaphore. Why not? And then the allocator. So config the allocator. Make sure to add the semicolon since we're not using expect here. Next up is instead of render finish semaphore now. We need some other, uh, let's uh, destroy the image acquired semaphore. Let's go, and that's basically it. Lovely. Now we're basically finished with the setup. Now it's time to actually set up the what's going to happen each and every frame. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go back to our application.h, okay, here. After pulling events or before, I'm just going to go with after. Um, if anyone have any reason why would we do that before or something like that, let me know, please. I'm also a beginner. But anyways, it seems to me that it's working just fine. It makes more sense to me. In fact, 
In the tutorial, it looks like they're waiting for the frame to finish at the start of the frame for some reason. Uh, but I'm gonna wait for it at the end of the frame. Now the thing is, at the start of the frame, since they're doing it at the start, they're also gonna make use of the signaled flag bit in the semaphore. But I just don't understand. Why would you? Or maybe they just wanted to teach why that flag would be useful. But anyway, so my, again, there is a lot that you can do different. This is Vulcan. Everything is in your own control on your own hands. But for me, at least, uh, at least until now, I don't see really a problem with it. I can't see a problem with it for now. Uh, but basically, we're gonna go ahead and actually let's let's create the functions right now even. So the first thing we're gonna try to acquire an image from the swap chain. So acquire swap chain image, right? There you go. So acquire swap chain image. Of course, we're gonna pass in the state. Next up, we're gonna try to render. Actually, first of all, we're gonna record record command buffer. Okay, so we're gonna record commands to the command buffer. And the second thing we're gonna actually uh, submit command buffer. Well, uh, let's actually go ahead and then continue on our way of doing things, which is basically swap chain, image acquire, you know, command buffer, record. And here, he, you, well, command buffer submit. And there you go. I'm gonna pass in the state, of course. Okay, so after you record the command buffer, then you submit it. Well, and that's basically we're submitting our rendering commands. And after that, we're gonna to try to present to the swap chain. So swap chain, uh, present, image present, saved. And there you go. All right, lovely. So that's basically all we need. Um, pretty much. And by the way, we're gonna wait for the frame to finish using the fence in the present. But we, we're gonna see shortly how is that gonna be done. All right, so to be honest, I'm not sure. It makes more sense, as I said, to make this function into the swap chain. But right now, just to keep it simple, I think. I don't know, to be honest. I'll just keep it in the render, okay? Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that stuff. So swap chain now. Render pass destroy render destroy. Yo, this render pass destroy just for organization purpose. Let's put it with this create a uh, pair. Okay, so where are we creating the render pass? There you go. And since we're in the render pass section, we gotta I want to add something that we didn't add before, which is subpass dependency. Subpass dependency. Uh, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Alright. So subpass dependencies. Where is it? Here we go. So this is a VK subpass dependency. Make sure to create dependency, not dependency too, uh, because there is another extension of doing that stuff. Uh, so let's start by the source subpass. Now the source subpass will be another frame. So we're gonna say subpass external. There you go, VK subpass external. The destination subpass is the first subpass. Uh, and the only one that we have because we only created one subpass in the render in the render pass and it's the index of it is zero, right? Uh, but yeah Because it's the first subpass and there you go now for the source axis mask for the source axis mask We're gonna go with zero. We don't need any special access there and uh, the destination axis mask is for if I remember well, it's for writing, okay? So vk axis mask, well, axis write, yo. Um, memory host write bit, shader write bit. 
to be honest, I don't really remember it well. So let's check the the browser, okay? If we go to the Vulkan tutorial, because to be honest, I don't really, you know, exactly understand how this works, but for this subpass dependency, in fact, you can just skip this whole subpass dependency. It will just work just fine. At least for me, it did. Uh, but yeah, but just for the sake of not going crazy, right? So let's go to presentation. No, no, drawing, right? So in drawing, if you go to rendering and presentation, I think, yeah. Uh, they have done that somewhere here. Let's see. I think recording the command buffer uh, to make sure it's able to record. Record command buffer image index. Uh, let's, there we go. Subpass dependency. So as you can see, make a subpass external zero. Uh, okay, I forgot about this SRC stage mask in the dependency. Interesting. Uh, all right. <laughs> Destination stage mask. Okay, so let's start by the stage mask. First of all, so uh, SRC stage mask is equal to what? Well, uh, destination subpass. To be honest, I would like the source end to be with each other, right? Just so it's more clear what's going on there, I think. Um, yeah, I'll just say it's the destination access mask. In this case, it is access mask is access color attachment right bit. Okay, that was what I was looking for. So, vacate attachment uh, right bit. There you go. Vacate access color attachment right bit. Okay. Uh, if you want a description about the subpass dependencies, you can look out for this tutorial. I don't know exactly how that works. Um, I did understand some some stuff, but I just don't want to say anything because it's probably not uh, entirely correct. So, yeah, uh, SRC access mask, the SRC access mask. So stage mask. Now for the stage mask, we're gonna go with stage color attachment output. But now this is what I really understood well. Um, VK pipeline. Stage uh, color attachment output bit. This is the only thing here that I really uh, understood 100%, I think. Although it could still be wrong, but it just makes sense, right? Uh, which is the fact that we don't have to wait, you know, for the whole, like, vertex, you know, like, the thing is you need an image to render to, when you're in the stage of fragment and and basically writing to the color attachment that's where you really need the image to exist the acquired image to exist um so vertex when you're just dealing with geometry like the vertex shader and the other stages that that is before it you don't really need the image to be acquired Okay, so you can actually go ahead and let the GPU uh, process the vertices, etc. You know, run the vertex shaders, etc. Right, and then just wait. Uh, the sh the the GPU will only wait when it comes to writing to the output into the color attachment, which is our image. Okay, so we're only waiting for the image to be acquired when we actually get to the stage where we really need that thing, right? So you could be just fine with just waiting for the whole thing, but this is a little bit more optimized, especially if you have a lot of vertices and the vertex shader, etc., is doing a lot of work, etc., etc. Okay, uh, but that's basically it. That's basically it, 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 okay? Uh, but I really advise you to go through all this tutorial. Uh, okay, so that's basically for the dependencies, hopefully. And what else? What else? What else? What else? So the render destroy, render create. Okay, lovely. Sync objects create destroy, allocate, destroy, create, 
destroy create render path destroy create all right all everything is quite lovely so now let's go back to our application so now we have to create the swap chain image acquire and where i'm gonna do that well uh, okay now I don't know, I feel like doing that in the swap chain itself. You know what? Let's just do it here anyways for now. So void swap chain. I mean, there's no problem in doing that. So you know what? Let's just do it there. Okay. Where is it? The swap chain. It doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of organization, but I'm just going crazy about it. <laughs> so where is it where is it where is it okay so we're gonna go to the window right yeah the window so you're gonna go to the window then basically we can put it here right so void swap chain uh acquire image um in fact if you want to be more precise we could say next image but anyway it's fine so swap chain acquire image you get the state there we go. Now here we're gonna say we're gonna use VK acquire next image KHR. And of course, since the swap chain is well part of an extension, VK acquire next image KHR is also an extension. That's why it ends with this KHR thing. Here we're gonna give it the device. Next up, we're gonna give it the swap chain. Window dot swap chain. Let's go. Next up is the timeout. So here we're gonna give it U sixty four max. Uh, U64 max. U int 64 max, right. So basically here you can give it a timeout where if the the swap like if we didn't acquire next image in a set like for example in one second or two seconds or something like that, then we're basically just gonna stop the the thing, right? Just we're just gonna error or something whatever it's like basically it's a timeout we're not gonna wait anymore okay but you could also say you end 64 max to actually wait forever theoretically right that's why we're getting the maximum value of you and 64 which is this this guy right here this huge number of seconds okay um so yeah now what else what else is this semaphore so here you have to actually tell it which semaphore to signal when the image have been acquired. And here where we're gonna use our image acquired semaphore. Okay. All right, nice. Next up is the fence. You could also give it the fence or you could give it only the semaphore or the fence or both, okay? But I don't care about the fence right now. There is also image index. So for the image index here, it's basically, I'm going to give it a, a address to an int and it's going to tell me where is that thing. Okay. So let's go ahead. State window dot swap chain dot, uh, image acquired index. Okay. I'm going to create that thing right there. Create new field and there you go. We got UN32T image acquired index inside the swap chain. Nice. Um, next up is the where, where where I was. There you go. Okay, nice. And that's pretty much it for that one. Now I'm just gonna handle the oh yeah, another swap chain abstraction, uh, but the actual handle, the actual swap chain KHR, right? Because the swap chain is just an abstraction over some stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Now let's actually make sure to expect. There is some errors that we should handle uh, later on that could be handled, you know. Uh, it doesn't mean that the swap chain have failed completely. Uh, but right now I'm not gonna care about it because we're not gonna be recreating this swap chain and we don't have a very sizable window, etc. okay? Uh, but yeah, so couldn't acquire next image by the way from what i understood is that we're gonna get the next image index you know the one that we have here we're gonna get it immediately okay but 
when the image will get acquired for, for us to be able to render into it, etc., is unknown. When, it, when that's going to happen, it's going to go ahead and signal the semaphore, which only be signaled, of course, in the GPU, right? Um, so yeah, now that's what for the swap chain acquire image for. Next up is basically the swap chain present. I don't remember what I called it actually. Hold on a second. Uh, swap chain image present. There you go. By the way, since we are do doing that, let's say image acquire instead actually. Yeah. All right. Swap chain image present. Uh, okay. So I'm going to leave the, the implementation of this guy later on uh, because we knew, do need to understand some things before presenting to the, uh, to the, the image to the swap chain, okay, uh, or to the window, etc. whatever. <laughs> Anyways, um, application. Now, record and submit. This is what's useful. All right, so uh, not useful, but basically this is the meat of all that we're going to do, right? So this is the rendering, basically. So record and submit. We're gonna do it in the render for this ones because it makes sense, right? Uh, so doesn't matter where you put them because we're not gonna be destroying or creating anything, but uh, let's see, let's just do it here. Okay, so void command buffer, record. That's the first thing. And of course we're gonna get the state. Second thing is command buffer submit state. There you go. Nice. Uh, let me make sure that we're actually doing it right. Application dot h. Oh, command buffer submit like this. Okay. Interesting. Now we're all good to go. So how we can record the command buffers? Now you could say vk reset uh, command pool reset. To be honest, I don't remember the function exactly, but we don't need it. So basically, the, it's just how you actually can uh, like reset the command pools, the command buffers, right? So you can start again from scratch. But since we're actually having that flag um of reset command buffer bit we don't need to do any of that the moment we're going to begin command buffer again it's fine right so although there is one catch though is that you should make sure that you don't record you don't begin the command buffer once again if the command buffer is still getting submitted to the gpu at least that's how it works so yeah uh state command buffer well, render dot command buffer. Let's go. Next up is the command buffer begin info. Pk command buffer begin info. This could give you the uh, what could I say? The vibes of you know, OpenGL begin draw and draw etc. End frame start frame whatever. So it's type vk command buffer. Begin info, there you go. Next up, there is also the flags. I don't think I need any flags. Let me make sure. Hold on a second. Let's see the flags that are possible. No, I don't need any of these, but these are kind of interesting actually. But yeah, I don't need them right now. At least I think so. So uh, let's go back. Swap chain image presents. Okay, command buffer submit. That's pretty much it for the baking. Begin command. Let's expect. We didn't begin. Command. Buffer. We could also say for frame i comma state swap chain well window dot swap chain dot image index. Image acquired index. Okay, this is not needed, but it's just nice to, to know which which command buffer could have failed. Like a, in which frame maybe or something like that, but uh, there's really no need to just uh, remove it. I just want to, 
to show you that it is possible. Okay. Now, after beginning, of course, you have to end the command buffer recording, okay? So vk end command buffer. Here, you just give it the command buffer. And since I'm going to be using this command buffer a lot, I'm just going to uh, put it into a local variable. Now, since this command buffer is not an actual primitive value, it is a, or a structure or whatever, it is an actual handle, and handle is kind of like a pointer in some sense. Um, I don't have to worry about it being copied instead of referenced because the handle is doesn't matter, right? Uh, but yeah, I can just say vk command buffer. Uh -huh. Now, if vk command buffer wasn't a handle, you know, it was some kind of something else, then I should actually uh, reference it using the pointer, but whatever. Command pool. Okay, that is just something that is uh, a bug that you could easily make and you get sig faults, etc. as a beginner in C. So yeah, uh, state render window context config, render command pool, not command pool, command buffer, bro. Okay, uh, all right, I'm losing some brain cells right now. Okay, um, now instead of doing this, I can just say command buffer. Let's go. Of course, the error is couldn't end command buffer. Now, what's interesting, though, is the fact that why would begin command buffer error? And even more, why end command buffer would error? Now, begin command buffer would error, maybe, for example, I don't know exactly if it will error something like this, but this is just an example, right? So it could, for example, error if somehow the command buffer is not allocated or something like that, or maybe the command buffer is still submitted or something you never know right uh for the event and command buffer this is interesting because right now the thing is each and every function that starts with vk cmds cmd stands for command is an actual command that you can record to the command buffer between beginning and ending the command buffer okay so vk cmd um now, the thing is, you'll notice that all of these VKCMDs returns void. It doesn't return any error. But of course, you'll surely, uh, it's more intuitive that those commands can return errors, right? If something is wrong. Now, the thing is, those errors while we're recording, it doesn't give you any errors. But when it does, it's actually when you end the command buffer. That's just something to keep in mind. So VKCMD, now we're going to begin the render pass. Okay, we're going to use our render pass, our rendering blueprint. Okay, so state render document buffer. Next up is the VK render pass create info. Let's go. Next up is the sub pass contents. Now, I think if you're using a uh, secondary command buffers, etc., you gotta actually say uh, something else, which is secondary. There you go. VK subpass content secondary command buffers, uh, right? But since I'm not using any secondary command buffers, I can just go with inline. VK subpass contents inline. There you go. Now uh, let's see what we have else. So. Oh, not a render pass create info, begin info. Uh, let's go. Okay, nice. Dot S type, of course, is begin render pass. Oh my god. Render pass, create info, uh, begin info, right? The next thing is I would like to do is a frame buffer. So which frame buffer we're talking about right now? Well, we could get the frame buffer from the image index. So let's get our image index beforehand. Okay, so uint 32t uh, acquired image index. So image index acquired. Or whatever. So state uh, uh, window.swapchain.acquired image acquired index. Okay. 
Okay, so image acquired index. Let's go. So now I have my uh, the one that is needed. All right, so now let's grab the frame buffers. So state render dot frame buffers index of the image acquired index. So we're basically getting the frame buffer that is tied to that specific image index, okay? And of course, image index is actually referring to the image that we're gonna acquire after some time. Okay, so render area, frame buffer, clear value count. Now this is all some interesting stuff. Let's start by the render pass because it makes sense. So say render dot render pass, let's go. No, I think it makes more sense to add the render. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Frame buffer, then the render area. So for the render area is, well, uh, for the render area, it's a vk, VK rec 2D. So let's create a vk rec 2D. For the offset, I don't care. For the extent, I do care. So I'm gonna get the swap chain image extent. So state window dot swap chain dot uh, image extent there you go that's pretty much it for the render area comma next up is the clear value count how much clear values you're gonna have now the thing is remember when in the uh in the render pass if you remember we have set some ops in the attachments where is it? Hold on a second. I'm trying to find it. Render pass create. Okay. Uh, where is it? There we go. There we go. So you remember when we said this load operation and store operation, etc. So we had this guy load op clear. So for the first attachment and the only attachment that we have we said op clear. Now, when you say op clear, you have to specify the clear value that you want to clear with, which color to clear with that attachment. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Of course, it's gonna be an array because you could have multiple attachments that, that wants to clear uh, its, itself, you know? So yeah, the clear value count, I already did that. So what about clear value now? It is clear value, right? No, hold on, clear. There we go, p clear values is equal to what? So we're gonna create an array for that. So the type of p clear values is vk clear value. Okay. vk clear value. Not vk clear color value, but vk clear value, okay? Um, clear values uh, it's an array of course is equal to all right the first clear value and the only one in this case is uh, well here in fact instead of doing it this way I'm gonna really let's see mm. So we could put it in the config, right? So the config dot, let's say background color, you know. Create new field. And this is a VK clear value. Let's see if that works. Yep, seems like it, so nice. So we could either say this clear values, or since we have only one value, we could just say directly this address of that but let's just go with the array way of doing it okay fine and hopefully that's it let me make sure render pass render area frame buffer nice 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 so this is the begin render pass you basically give it where to render uh in which area to render uh i think for maximum performance you would want to render to the whole image um and the clear values of the attachments that have Lloyd clear or whatever, basically it wants to clear and which value you want to use and the render pass to use, etc. So now 
After beginning the render pass, of course, again, biggest TMD and render pass. Whenever you begin something, you have to end it. That is how life works, right? So here, let's actually give it the command buffer. Uh, okay, now be between beginning and ending the render pass, we're gonna bind our pipeline. So bind the pipeline, state command buffer. So uh, render, uh, not command buffer, pipeline, okay. Uh, graphics pipeline to be exact. And of course the VK pipeline bind point, you give it which pipeline you're talking about, is it graphics or compute or what? So in this case, it's graphics, there you go. And of course you give it the actual Oh, interesting. So in fact, you give it the command buffer first. And in fact, all VKCMDs functions, right? All the commands, actually you give it the command buffer first, right? Um, that is how it works, right? And of course it doesn't give any errors. So VKCMD. Now what's next? Well, we could inbind, I think maybe, no? It doesn't look like maybe when you bind another pipeline, maybe it just b b binds the next pipeline. I don't know. But anyways, it looks like there is no in bind there. But anyways, so after binding our pipeline, our graphics pipeline, now we can actually uh, tell it to draw using that pipeline. So VK CMD draw command buffer. And of course, using that pipeline and or under pass. So command buffer and now you tell it how much vertices to draw and if you remember how much vertices we have embedded into the shader um, in the vertex shader we have embedded three vertices now you should make sure that this matches otherwise we may be accessing the wrong like some uh, memory that that we shouldn't access or something like that we could crash something i don't know uh, it, Anything could could happen depending on the driver, etc. You never really know. But yeah, anyways. So now let's go back. For now, let's just hard code it because the shader stuff is hard coded too. But later on, we're gonna actually uh, make it more dynamic where we can actually do crazy stuff about it. For an instance count, we only care about one instance. Um, the first vertex zero, first instance zero. Okay, so this is kind of basically like the taking a slice of an array, right? So which vertex you start with? Is it zero, one, or what exactly? So if it's zero, then it's gonna go like this, zero, one, two, three. So basically, if you go to here, right? So if you go first in vertex is zero, then the how much vertices there is is three. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna go in GL vertex index will become zero. The other one will become one, two. So three vertices, right? There you go. So it will grab these three things. Now, if you say, for example, first vertex is one, then it's gonna go, uh, and if the vertices count is three, so it's gonna go one, two, three, right? stuff like that so basically you give it the start and the end not actually not the end in fact you give it the start and the length how much uh, from that start uh, so that's basically as you can see vertex count and yeah that's pretty much it i think and yeah vkcmd cmd draw and now that's it for the command buffer recording now for the command buffer submit we're submitting the command. Now we have recorded the command buffer. Um, now we have to actually submit this command buffer to the GPU, right? To the queue that we have. Um, so how we do that? Well, vk command, well, submit. vk queue submit, okay. Here we give it which queue you're gonna use. And since we're using some, you know, graphics, uh, graphics commands like the graphics uh, command buffer, we're using the vkcmd draw, etc, etc, maybe also the render pass. Um, that means that we should make sure that the queue that we're submitting this command buffer to should support graphics. And how we did that, we actually checked if that queue uh, 
supports graphics or not. When we were choosing the, the, the queue, if you remember using the queue families, all right, so we just checked if the queue families of certain queues is is it supporting graphics or not, if you remember well. But anyway, so state context.queue. Next up is how much submissions, oh, just one. VKQ submit. Uh, what? VK submit info, I mean, right? What else is the fence? Okay. Interesting. So after finishing rendering, you could basically give it a fence to tell, um, to signal a fence after finishing rendering. Okay, so here I'm going to use my in flight fence here. So state render the in flight fence. Nice. Next up, we have all of this crazy stuff right here. S type is equal to what? Submit. Make a structure type. Is this, is it? Huh. What if I say Q submit? No? No, it's it looks like submit, all right? Anyways, okay. Again, make sure to say submit info, not submit to info, right? Submit info to whatever, uh, because there is another extension for that stuff. Um, command buffer. Now, how much command buffers we have to submit right now? Just one. Command buffers array pointer. Well, we're just gonna give it the, the command buffer pointer, right? So state render the command buffer. We only have one command buffer, so there's no need to allocate memory. Or whatever. Um, next up is white semaphores, signal semaphores. Uh, okay. So which semaphores we want to wait before starting to render? What we want to wait for in the GPU to start our rendering operations. So we only want to wait for one semaphore. And that semaphore is... Uh, it's uh, image acquired semaphore. So we're only going to start rendering when the image gets acquired. So how do you do that? State render oh, image acquired semaphore. Let's go. So this is the, the semaphore that we're going to wait for. And of course, this hap all this happens inside the GPU because VKQ submit is happening inside the GPU. Uh, the other guys also happen inside the GPU. So we basically link them together. We don't have to wait for anything on the CPU until now, uh, right? Uh, but we will wait for the CPU in this case when the in-flight fence, when the render gets finished. Uh, but anyways, uh, so you kind of can see like how you actually synchronize between the GPU operations, like device to device, and then how you synchronize from host to device, like CPU and GPU, right? Uh, but anyways, so which semaphores we want to signal now? So I want to signal only one semaphore. So signal semaphore count is equal one. And next up is signal semaphores is equal to what? Which one? Well, state render dot render finished semaphore. That's what the semaphore that I want to actually signal. All right, so we have set up the command buffers, hopefully. Yep, we did. We waited for some semaphores and we signaled some other semaphores. Now, the thing is, the only thing that we need now is VK pipeline stage flags. Which pipeline stage you want to wait for before starting rendering the rendering operation? So, we gotta wait for the, I don't actually remember. Oh, so here, you know, hold on a second. The way DST stage mask, it's a pointer to VK pipeline stage flags. Now I wonder how it gets the count of how much stage mask you have. And uh, that's weird, okay, fine. Anyways, so which array of stuff? VK pipeline stage flags. You could wait for all of these stages. Okay, we're gonna wait for color attachment output bit once again. 
pretty much. So let's go back to render. I'm basically gonna create a, an array here. So VK stage, pipeline stage flags, flags, flask, flags. Okay, and we're gonna put that VK uh, color attachment up a bit. There you go. Just to make sure I'm gonna recheck the tutorial to be honest on this one. Uh, there you go. Stage color attachment output bit. Stage color attachment output bit. There you go, nice. So that's pretty much it for the common buffer submit. Submit, submit, submit. The only thing that is left now, after the rendering is finished, we gotta make sure to, well, the present, presenting the image to the window or to the swap chain or whatever you wanna think about it. Okay, anyways. Uh, actually, it is always inside the swap chain. So yeah, present it to the window. Okay, so now, VK, present. Q, present, KHR. Again, you have to use a queue to actually present. Now, this queue doesn't have to be graphics or whatever. It, as long as it supports presentation, you're good to go. Because if you remember well, when we opened up our beautiful application here, uh, oh my God, it opened a lot of times since I said beautiful, okay. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the programmer have made it, don't like do that, but anyways. Anyways, so uh, Q families. All right, so as you can see, it tells each Q family tells us if it supports presentation or not. For example, this one supports presentation and graphics. Uh, and this is the one that you're gonna probably select. Uh, and the Q family too. It also supports presentation, but it doesn't support graphics, for example. So for example, what you could do if you want to use multiple queues, you could, for example, go ahead and uh, uh, you know, make this uh, render graphics into the screen and then make this uh, only do compute and sub and present to the screen, basically, in some sense. Uh, so you could basically uh, present an image while you're still rendering the next frame, etc. But right now, we're not going to go into that territory because it's much more complex for now. So let's exit right now. Q present KHR. So here, let's just give it our graphics queue. So render graphics. Uh, well, queue. No, not render. Context dot queue. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not gonna get this <laughs> this triangle until, uh, you know, like my brain just <laughs> shut down. Present info catcher. I'm losing some brain cells right now. <laughs> okay. So S type present info KHR. There you go. Uh, now you tell it which swap chains. Now you can actually present multiple swap chains at at the same time, but I'm only care about so presenting one swap chain. Swap chains. Window swap chain. There you go. Of course, I get, gotta give a reference to it because, in fact, it's a pointer to an array of swap chains. And make sure to actually give it the handle, the actual Vulcan object, not our swap chain abstraction um, or swap chain struct. Okay, so next up is the image indices. This is also an array. And I would think so that you could give it image index for each swap chain. Okay, but since we only have one swap chain, we could just go ahead and say address of something. Okay, so address of, in this case, state uh, swap chain uh, window, right? The swap chain dot image acquired index. There you go. And you could also tell it results, but this is not useful for us. Uh, this would be useful if you have multiple swap chains and you have to make sure uh, which error is for each swap chain. Uh, but since we only have one swap chain, we don't care. The error will be like the error that Q present gives us anyways, if there is any. So which semaphores we want to wait for? Well, before presenting it to the window, you have to wait for the rendering to get to finish, right? To finish these operations. So P weights semaphores. Now, first of all, the count, 
how much we want, uh, how much seven fours we want to wait for. Well, one. Uh, which ones? Well, wait semaphore. There you go. I'm gonna wait for state render dot render finish semaphore. There you go. Okay, and of course this whole synchronization stuff between the semaphores happens in the GPU. The CPU doesn't care, right? Um, so yeah, p image indices, p weight semaphores. Swap chain count. All right. So that, I think that's pretty much it, maybe. Yeah. Looks like. Yep. 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 Seems like it. Yep. Now, uh, right. Let's make sure to handle any errors if there's any. Expect. Couldn't present. Swap chain image. We could also give it which swap chain image. All right, so that's pretty much it for that one. Now, you could do this in a separate function, but I just decided to just like how OpenGL does it. Uh, you know, like it it actually waits when you when you try to present to the window. So I'm just going to follow up with that thing for now. So here to actually make the CPU wait for the rendering to finish in the GPU, I got to use the fence that we have set it before uh, for the rendering operations. So like for the submitting of the command buffer, and I'm just going to say, wait for fences, uh, say device, render dot device. Actually context dot device. Okay, here you give it how much fences you want to wait for. And in my case, it's just one. And which one? Well, it's state render dot rend uh, in flight fence. Okay, and do you wait? Do you want to wait for all of them or just one of them? Uh, in this case, we only have one, so it doesn't matter if you say true or false. But I'm just gonna say, I don't know, true or false. <laughs> No idea. Let's see true. Okay, fine. Doesn't matter. Let's we'll just say false. Fine. Doesn't really matter. Uh, timeout. Timeout. I'm gonna also say again. You end sixty four max. And there you go. Although you have to make sure because uh, something which is the fact that timeout here it's sixty four max, right? But I, I could remember that it was something else like U thirty two if I remember. You end. Yeah, uh, not here actually. Okay, let's see. It's in, let's go to render. Is there 64 max there? I don't remember where I put it that. Where are we having that max? Oh yeah, let's, I think, yeah, it's in, it's in the, uh, in the swap chain itself, maybe, if I remember well. There you go. Now let's make sure this timeout is 64, actually. Yeah, it is also 64. I do remember some timeout was UN32, if I if I remember well. I don't really know. But anyways, uh, UN64 max. I think there's just some <laughs> wrong signals that I got there. Anyways, so basically, here where actually the fence will get uh, waited for, uh, like here where the actual program will just stall and wait until the in-flight fence Get signaled, and that would happen uh, when the GPU have finished rendering. Okay. Now, no, no, no. Of course, this could give a result. So let's say expect. I couldn't wait for fence. Uh huh. Now the thing is, if you want to reuse a fence. You have to make sure to reset that fence. Oh, the carries. By the way, hold on a second. There you go. This is the command pool that I was talking about before, right? 
but it didn't show up because instead of uh, saying VK like this, I said, instead of VK like this, I said this, so it didn't show up. But anyway, so VK reset fences, state context dot device. Uh, the fence count is one. And which fence? Well, uh, this guy, right? And there you go. Uh, could be there any error? Yep, there could be. So let's make sure to expect. By the way, you could check which errors could happen on every function, etc., and all that beautiful details in the wiki, in the registry of Vulkan, or even the the specs if you want to go that deep. So couldn't reset the fence. Couldn't reset fence. The now is the moment of truth. Will we have a triangle or not? So let's see. Run. And of course not. So let's see. We missed the semicolon here. Okay. Uh, I'm glad I did miss the semicolon there because I didn't actually add uh, error checking. So couldn't uh, submit. Command buffer. Okay. Now if we run this, and there you go, we get our beautiful triangle. <laughs> now the thing is, um, let's see. Let's go back to our main. Main.c. We, we still forgot to actually make the background color, but since we're using the initializer, it just got set to zero, and that's why we're seeing a black uh, background. Now I could could uh, actually set this to whatever color you want. Right? So you could say, for example, zero, which is basically, of course, black, which is the one, the, the default one when you have the initializer and didn't set the parameter, as you can see. But you could also set it to any RGBA values, okay? So let's just go with one, 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 okay? for white and there you go oh my god too bright now the color that i like most is 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 but in linear space not srgb but in srgb this is not the color that i like okay now the thing is you may see that this triangle colors is weird also the background color 0 0.1 should be much more darker than this uh but the thing is uh if you remember well in our swap chain we actually have set it to uh srgb uh, which makes it uh which basically accounts for the human perception for colors uh, basically the fact that humans perceive more darker shades than white shades, than lighter shades, I mean. Um, so what happens is that there is some, you know, like some operations that's been done to actually account for that. And so you get more, like you basically balance out that range to the, to the shades depending on that. So but we could actually change it to not srgb let's go with unorm so you can try it out so let's go ahead to application window if we go to the swap chain right so where is it uh window right swap chain where is the swap chain uh where we're setting the format there you go. So here, if you remember well, we preferred the color space of RGB and we preferred the format, VK format, BGR8, blah, 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 blah. Now we could basically remove this whole thing and you just will select the first format, which is in my case, at least, it is actually UNORM. It's not sRGB. Uh, oh my God. There you go. Okay, so where is that thing? Formats? No, uh, surface, there you go. So in my case, I have two formats in Linux, in NVIDIA. 
I have two formats. I have uh, uNorm as the first one and the second one is sRGB. Now, since I'm preferring sRGB, it's selecting the second one. But if I re like remove this whole thing about preferring stuff up, I can just, I can just say F0, okay, for now. And there you go. Now I get no sRGB. I get just linear colors. Now, as you can see, this is much darker, right? Uh, so basically that's it that is something to keep in mind right there but let's just uh, keep srgb because it will looks it will really help when it comes to uh, actual scenes 3d scenes or 2d scenes or whatever uh, in making colors much nicer okay whatever so now what now now what format index equal i uh or instead of F0, you could say, you could remove this color space thing. And you could say, for example, instead of sRGB, you could say uNorm, for example, if, if your system supports that. And there you go, same result. Uh, but yeah. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it sRGB, okay? And for this guy, maybe I'm just gonna account for, it's gonna make it a little bit darker and hopefully I get in that shade because I like that shade a lot, so. Uh, yeah, not bad, not bad. So 0 0.01 gave me that shade, which is quite nice. All right, so that was it for our video, for our triangle. Next video, I think we're going to do some more animations for that triangle, like maybe rotate the triangle or skid or something using shaders, etc. I don't know exactly, but we're going to see. We're going to see what to do in the next video. It's probably going to be so much fun since the moment you like end the the triangle in Vulcan or pretty much in graphics, right? You have a lot of possibilities because if you can draw a triangle, then you can almost draw anything, right? Or maybe you can draw anything. So yeah, basically it just becomes much easier after that. By the way, don't try this swap chain components mapping yet. This doesn't really work out for just what we're doing right now. This is actually works out when we're sampling textures, which we didn't cover yet. So uh, just don't try to do And of course, if you change the size, it will change the size. But of course, there you go, as you can see, nice. But of course, if you made this uh, resizable, right, and then you run and, and you know, uh, resize the screen, it will probably uh, you know, crash unexpectedly or put an error, uh, but yeah. Uh, so that's actually, in fact, the next video, I think we're going to try to recreate the swap chain or something like that. So there is a lot to do more than that, or maybe we are also going to handle in flight frames so we can have more performance or something like that. But before we actually end this video, I want to do the last final thing, which is to actually get our frame rate. And as I said, don't compare this frame rate with, with your OpenGL application because it just doesn't make sense yet because we still are not using any kind of uh, interesting optimizations for Vulkan. And our scene is utterly simple. Uh, so, yeah. So basically, it's really not fair to compare a Vulkan right now for with other you know, like rendering stuff like OpenGL. So now where we should go. Yeah, we should go to the application right here. So before so this is basically where we kind of like, yeah, here we go. This is where we start our frame. Okay. So we could just record T like the time. So, uh, Double, okay. Frame start. Frame time start, okay. Now frame time start. We could use GFW get time. It will give us a double value, which indicates how much uh, seconds. Now what we could do is, we could say print F, right? You could say uh, percent F, and we could say rent frame time start. But of course, this will only give us the. In fact, we'd like GFW get time minus frame time start. Okay. 
and this will basically be the FPS, but this is the actual frame time, okay? So this is the frame time, double frame time is equal to this guy. And this could be the frame time end. Just to make it clearer, the so double frame time end. Okay, now what we could say is we could say FPS too. So uh, we could say double FPS or frame per second. Or instead of that, we could instead of time, we could say frequency, which is basically FPS, all right, just in more technical manner. Okay, so one divided by so when you have a period or a time and you want the frequency, you just say one divided by whatever that period or that time is, and you get the frequency. So basically, if you have how much something takes to to happen in a second, right? How much time it takes, right? You could know how much times it can happen in one second by saying one divided by that time, essentially. Hopefully that makes any sense. So yeah, frame frequency. And of course, let's not forget about the new line. Now you can notice that it's actually printing FPS. And the thing is, this is not, you know, like, Printive is kind of slow, etc. So what we could do to make it nicer is to actually change the title to reflect that, at least for debug mode. Uh, right, so let's actually do that. And by the way, share with me your FPS, just so I have a little idea of what's going on. So yeah. Also share with me your, your, uh, your, uh, your monitor refresh rate. My monitor refresh rate is 75 hertz. Of course, if you want to. So uh, now the thing is, if you want to actually go ahead and and change the window title, so we could say window title. Yeah, GFW set window title. You give it the window, which is state window dot handle, uh, because window is just our struct, our custom struct. The handle is the actual GFW window handle. Okay, so GFW window. Um, now here it is expecting some string. Now the thing is we don't have a string. We have a a double. So how we can actually make that a string? Like turn a double to a string. Now there is a lot of ways as always, but here is a nice way to do this. I can say sn print f right, and I could create some buffer, some static buffer. Static basically means that we're only making it once. You know, it's basically persists between frame. Uh, between calls, okay, um, if that makes any sense. But anyways, so static char buffer, okay. It's going to be in a static array. And it could here you could say any kind of size, okay. For example, 32 characters or, or however you want, how much you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, uh, frame frequency. And now I need to give it, where is our buffer or let's say let's say FPS string let's actually call it FPS string okay hmm it's n print f oh this takes again takes a pointer to that and then the max length all right nice so it also takes uh, what is the maximum length possible which is of course this guy right here okay they should be the same. Otherwise, you may have a buffer overflow, okay? If if uh, this guy is larger than this guy, okay? Just make sure that's the case. And next up now, we could actually give it the FPS string. Nice, lovely. There you go. And this should work out, hopefully. There you go. Now we're getting FPS, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you set this to something else, let's say maybe let's say eight for example just to show you something cool what's gonna happen is that it's gonna discard whatever is uh over eight characters so that's what happened right there and it looks like it actually 
tell us right now just the integer portion of this guy, which is quite lovely. But yeah, so that was it, I think, for this video. And see you later. Goodbye, guys. Please, by the way, <laughs> give me feedback about uh, what you have done until now. And let me know if you have any suggestions for the next uh, videos. If you found out something is wrong, please, I'm just a human being. I can make a lot of errors and I'm also a beginner. So uh, I may be understanding a lot of things wrong. But hey, we got a triangle today. So yeah, um, that was it for this video. Goodbye, everyone.